Listen, like I no kill because I have to. To protect us. You hear that? Us, bro. I don't want to be someone who could kill their own father. I never said I fucking did that. All right, shut the up saying that. Just being real with you, Rick. Now, after the latest drop from Stars with the exclusive first look for season four, the promotion continues. Just before you play anything on Stars, they always have an advert or two, and there were a couple of scenes from Power Book Two Ghost, and what I believe is a few scenes from Episode One. We've got a few scenes with Tariq St. Patrick, Kane, Monet, and Nomar, and I do expect the promotion to really start ramping up. Up next is definitely the trailer, so we've also got that to look forward to. There's going to be a few more teasers and interviews from the cast and crew, and so much more. But in this breakdown, we are going to be running through a few of those new scenes, what was said, what's happening, and just some general overall thoughts, theories, and early predictions for all things Power Book 2 Ghost Season 4. Now let's start with Tariq and Brayden again. With targets on their backs, they're gonna need each other more than ever before. We've got them in the car with their signature handshake, which I believe is from episode 1. It is a little dark, but you can see Tariq wearing exactly the same outfit as he is in this particular scene. Now there is a reason why I said they need to have each other's backs, especially very early on. In this scene, we hear Tariq saying, I just need you to have my back, and the only person I can think of that he's speaking to is Brayden. We all know that he had his back at the warehouse, which is when Obi gave him the call that Tariq was about to be clipped, but he's gonna have to be there once again, at what looks like an airstrip. Tariq is someone who will definitely want to take it to Nomar and the Tahardas, but he won't be able to do it on his own, he'll need Brayden to have his back, which I think will take a bit of convincing. I don't think Brayden will be fully on board with whatever Tariq has planned, because let's be honest, Brayden isn't a killer like Tariq is. He may have killed his uncle Lucas Weston, he may have also came in and saved Tariq at the warehouse, but you have to look at what Brayden's been through and done, compared to what Tariq has been through and also done, there's a huge difference. Tariq tracked up a lot of kills dating back to Ray Ray, the biggest being his father, but eventually I do think Brayden will have his back with whatever mission they have planned in episode 1. I do think Brayden will come around and they're gonna make the first move. After that, I do think it will turn into a bit of a cat and mouse game until the chessboard completely flips upside down, where alliances kind of shift because they definitely will at some point. The betrayal around the Tahada secret will definitely shift things. There's definitely going to be more betrayal, snitching, lies, secrets and death that will completely change the game in season 4. But as we kick off with episode 1, Tariq will need Brayden and vice versa because Kane and the Tahadas, they're definitely going to be on the hunt. Now this is Kane punching Trace Weston. I have gone back and double checked 309 when Robert Weston was taken in for questioning and everything does match up. This is definitely the Weston household and this is definitely Trace Weston who Kane's punching. Now why he's here at the Westons could actually be for a few reasons. He might be hunting down Brayden because of what happened at the warehouse. Don't get it twisted, Kane's ego will definitely be bruised because in his eyes, he wouldn't have liked the fact that Brayden who's this privileged silver spoon in his eyes came in and pretty much fucked shit up so he's definitely going to be on the hunt for both Brayden and Tariq. Now he could also be here to collect the debt, because let's not forget, the Weston family also owe the Tahadas big. Ain't nobody going nowhere. Your family owes my family money. I have no idea who the hell you people are, but we are not in a position to repay anybody's losses. So Tariq's trust fund wasn't the only thing that was lost in the Western holding Ponzi scheme, so was Lorenzo's life insurance policy, and so there is a huge debt that does need to be paid, a debt that I don't think Kane or the Tahadas are willing to forgive or forget. Now when it comes to Kane and Trace, they also have a bit of history that dates all the way back to 106. Let's remind ourselves, Kane took both Trace and Brayden and threw them on the corners of Queens to sling some product. Later on, Trace was also happy to testify in season 2, because he didn't exactly understand the consequences of the street game or what Brayden was in. So it's going to be very interesting to see what Trace says and does. On one hand, you've got Brayden who's going to be trying to protect his family from the Tahadas and Nomar. But on the other hand, Trace does have a bit of a big mouth with a tendency to talk shit, which probably will land him in a bit of trouble. So when we talk about Brayden's evolution as a character, what I wouldn't be surprised to see is Trace Weston's death. I do feel the synopsis teasing Brayden becoming a little reckless, you do have to wonder, what's gonna push him over the edge, what's gonna make him turn, could one of the things be a death of a family member, and if one of the westerns are to go, my money's on Trace. 
Now, you also wouldn't be surprised if the Westerns kind of just fled New York, because realistically, there is nothing left for them. They've lost everything to the Western holding Ponzi scheme. Their accounts are frozen. Their assets also may be seized. They've got the SEC breathing down their neck, and now they have the Tahardas to deal with. And so you really feel the walls could be closing in on the Westerns. So it might actually be in their best interest to kind of just get out of New York. But that's the situation with Kane and Trace Weston. Now with Monet, we've got her looking a lot more fit and healthy compared to the last time we saw her. I do think episode 401 will start with her in hospital fighting for a life, but then I expect Ghost to move on very swiftly as it always does. Does that mean there may be a bit of a small time jump at some point? Maybe, I wouldn't be surprised, because they have done it before. But we've got Monet in this teaser saying everything she did, she did for this family. And so let's take a look at some of the things she has done. She kept the Zeke secret hidden for 20 years. She kept the kids in specific positions, brought Tariq into her organization. She got rid of Rico, Mecca, Detective Whitman. She strung Carrie up to try and keep a hold of Zeke. She had a hand in the entire Castillo family being wiped off the chessboard because of what happened with Uncle Frank in season one. And then there's also getting rid of Lorenzo, the father of her three kids. So has she always done everything for the benefit of her family? In her eyes, she would say, yeah, she did. You put all this on me, but what about Lorenzo's hand in raising you? He chose this life for us, not me. I think she'd also say that she had to do some of those things because she had no choice. Lorenzo chose this life for them, not her. Now, as I always say, when it comes to the world of power, you can always look at multiple perspectives. And so we can make arguments for times where she's made decisions to save her family. Other times she's made decisions to take control over them. And other times there's been some crazy moves, which I don't think benefited the family, but instead, cause more of a divide. But when it comes to Monet and the Tahardas, definitely expect fireworks. Now there was also a scene with Nomar and Obi, with Nomar telling Obi, you think I want to be exposed? And the way in which she said this was in a real panic. So I do think Nomar will be up against it with her back against the wall at some point in season four. We know they're going to be introducing her daughter, Anya Covington, and we know she's going to cause Nomar a bit of trouble. We also know from the synopsis for season 4 that Nomar will have a fight on her hands to establish her business in the States. And if I were to put my money on who's fucking with her organisation, making life very difficult for her, there's only one man, Tariq St. Patrick. The other question I think we should be asking is, how does Obi play this? We know Obi was never fond of how she was running her New York operation. We also know he went behind her back by warning Brayden about what they were about to do to Tariq. So I'm questioning Obi's intentions. Where does his loyalties lie? Is it with Nomar or is he going to be looking out for his own self-interest? Because that's what power comes down to at the end of the day. It's each man or woman for themselves. There's always a hidden agenda, betrayal, lies and manipulation. So Obi's intentions and loyalty is definitely something to keep an eye on, especially considering his family have their green cards and are now in the States. Elsewhere, we've got an unknown character firing, and it does look like as if this person may be in the same airfield as Tariq is in, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is in episode 1 either. Whether Tariq has come to try and maybe stop Nomar from leaving New York on a private jet, who knows. But one thing we have to remember when it comes to Nomar is, she's powerful. Let's not forget about those snipers that took care of the Italian problem in Milan. So you have to assume that Nomar will be very well protected if and when Tariq decides to attack. Either way, we're in for an explosive episode 1. A lot of these scenes are from 401, and it's going to be an explosive start to an explosive season. But whether we get the right ending for season 4, that still remains to be seen. But that's a breakdown of some of the new scenes that dropped in an advert on Stars, with some general thoughts and predictions of where we are at this moment in time in terms of the storyline. Tariq will need Brayden more than ever before. Kane will be on the hunt. Monet will be looking to gain control, but Nomar seems to be losing control. So drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.